is up guys and we are back with another video and in this video we are going to be breaking down each floor of the abyss 9 through 12 with only four stars and seeing how to clear it because i know with the new abyss a lot of people have been struggling with all the different heralds but i'm gonna try to break it down for you guys give you guys some tips and tricks i'm gonna try to keep it as realistic as possible so i'm gonna keep it just four stars only that doesn't mean you can't use your five stars so feel free to swap out units here and there if you feel like that's gonna benefit you more but let's go ahead and jump into it and in the description i have a timeline of every single floor so if you guys are stuck on a specific floor you guys can skip to that or if you just want to watch the entire thing feel free to do that as well but yeah let's go ahead and get started with floor number nine so i'm briefly going to go over the character artifacts and weapons that i'm going to be using so you guys get an idea that this is not like a whale like build this is just regular characters so with my Nemo MC, I'm going to be running the free-to-play Festering Desire. And with a Nemo MC, you get C6 for free. So that's why I'm not running the four-piece Viridescent set. I'm running two-piece Wanderers for the extra elemental mastery. But if you guys do have four-piece Viridescent, you guys can run that. Again, my stats aren't that good. I'm mostly aiming for energy recharge. Like you guys can tell, I have 60% crit rate, 73% crit damage, nothing crazy. Okay, here's my official. My official, again, her stats suck. I have 998 attack. 25% crit rate and 95% crit damage. I'm not using her for damage. I'm just using her to apply electro. If I really wanted to build her damage, I would go for Thundering Fury and Gladiator. But unfortunately, I gave Thundering Fury to my Bennett, which you guys will see later. That's why she just has random Noblesse pieces. Sucrose is very similar to Anemo MC. She just has four piece Viridescent with all Elemental Mastery pieces. Again, with Elemental Mastery, you don't have to worry about substats. You just want to stack this as much as possible. So my substats don't even matter. Crit rate, crit damage right there. My Sing Chu as well, only a thousand attack, 62% crit rate, 81% crit damage. And I just focused on energy recharge. Okay, and here's my Bennett. And Bennett, I'm going to be running four piece Thundering Fury. And you guys will see why later in the Abyss. And here's my Shangling. She's just running four piece Crimson. Again, I don't really care about her damage. She only has 57% crit rate and 90% crit damage. And I just have the free to play prototype Star Glitter on her. And you guys will see this among all my supports that they're not really heavily invested at all. I just slap some artifacts on. I just slap some weapons on. The only characters that are really going to be invested are going to be my two main DPS characters. And for me, my two main DPS characters are going to be my Kaya as well as my Yanfei. So my Yanfei is going to be using the new free-to-play weapon as well as four-piece Wanderers. And she has 1657 attack, 52% crit rate, and 100% crit damage. Again, like my stats, even for my main DPS characters, are not that good. My really, my only good invested character is going to be Kaya. He has pretty decent stats. He has 72% crit rate and 190% crit damage. So yeah, those are most of my characters right there. As you guys can see, it's a pretty realistic team. You know, it's not so far-fetched that you have one really good character and a lot of like not so good characters because that's what my team looks like okay so now that you guys got a good idea of what most of the characters i'm going to be using let's just go ahead and jump straight into floor nine and obviously when you're choosing these cards you just want to use the one that's going to benefit you the best so in this case i'm just going to do elemental skill damage so for floor nine especially floor one all you have to do really use is going to be your anemo characters because all the enemies are going to be grouped up and you're just going to instantly kill all of them and you guys saw my Anemo character stats, like they're not really good and I'm already doing so much damage. And also you're not really in a time crunch because it's pretty easy to do. I would just focus the small ones first and then wait for the Whopper flowers to spawn. And then once they do, I would wait for them to group up because they usually like teleport right next to you. Again, you're not in a time crunch, so you can take your time. You just want to kind of aim your tornado with the Nemo MC against the wall. That way they can't really run anywhere. And then you just use your E ability and they're basically already dead, as you guys can see. And again, it doesn't require crazy investment for your Nemo MC to do that. And second half, similar concept, but this time they're going to be spread out. So what I found is using Sucrose when they're more spread out is a lot easier. And then using Nemo MC when the enemies are grouped up is a lot easier. Because Nemo MC's tornado doesn't really work when they're far away. Uh, you have to be relatively close to them for the tornado to work. So that's why it's just better to use Sucrose for situations where they're further apart. Again, the only annoying thing that you have to keep in mind for these floors is going to be sheer cold. Okay, 9-2. Again, you're going to choose a card that benefits you the best. For me, I just use crit rate and crit damage. That's what they offered me. And like I said, with Anemo MC, I like to go where the enemies are grouped up. So this is like the perfect situation. And Whopper Flowers follow wherever you go. So you don't have to go after them. Go where the other enemies are and the Whopper Flowers will follow you. And you basically just use your Anemo MC there. And again, this is very similar to the previous floor. Like, I don't even know what the difference is. Ideally, you want to swirl like Pyro or Hydro or Electro uh, because these guys have Cryo Resistance. And that's also why I don't have Kaya built as a Cryo DPS, at least on this floor, is because these Whopper Flowers do have Cryo Resistance. So 
it's better to just go physical DPS on them. Okay, so for this floor, you kind of just want to go for the guy with the Icicle Crystal underneath him. And with Yanfei, it's pretty easy because you pair him with Sing Chu and you can just melt through them. My Yanfei stats are not that good, but I'm still able to do a decent amount of damage with Sing Chu's Vaporize. And usually any floor with these uh, Patui agents, I would aim for the Hydro one because he's the healer for their team. And after you knock out the Hydro one, you can go for the rest. So 9-3 is the one with one large hill of Churl and then three in the back. I immediately go for the three in the back because they're going to become annoying later on. And they're pretty easy to kill with Animo MC and Swirl. And then once they're dead, you basically just have to focus this guy. And since you have Bennett and it's the last floor, feel free to like spam your burst and everything. And again, all these guys have cryo resistance. That's why you don't really want to go cryo damage on this floor. Uh, that's why I'm just going physical DPS Kaya. And I mentioned that earlier, but it's just good to show you guys in person as well how many cryo enemies there actually are. Okay, in the 9-3, I usually just always go for the Abyss Mages, starting the, with this one right here. You want to try to swirl these two together, that way they break their shields together. But early on, like this is going to matter more in the later floors when there's multiple Abyss Mages. Right now, it doesn't matter as much because they're pretty easy to break and they're lower level. Okay, so floor 9, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and go into floor 10. This is where things start picking up. Okay, so floor 10 is the first time you're going to be using Thundering Fury Bennett. And the reason for that is because in the second half of Chamber 2, you're going to have this Lecter right here, who with Thundering Fury Bennett is basically a cakewalk, and you guys will see that. Other than that, our teams are basically going to stay the same. Okay, so floor 10 is just a more annoying version of floor 9. You just have to be wary of the Sealies that are going around, because if you're not near them, you're going to be struck by Sheer Cold, which is, again, I hate Sheer Cold. It's probably the most annoying thing. It's not even like it's hard, it's more so it's just an inconvenience to everything. But yeah, the reason we have Sing Chu is even though we can get frozen, uh, he's good at just providing damage mitigation since we don't really have a healer. And you know, don't worry too much about keep getting frozen because you have like all this time, like I'm barely even spamming everything. Yeah, it does get annoying and the sheer cold comboed with all the bubbles can probably trigger a lot of people. But after doing this like a million times, it's nothing to really worry about. And this is what I mean, like sometimes you just want to pop Sing Chu's E like this just so you get that healing off from his bubble or not his bubble i just saw that bubble and said bubble but you just want to get that healing off but the shield isn't too hard to break because it's a lower level and you have a bunch of reactions that you can trigger with shangling and yanfei okay so this floor is going to have the abyss herald as well as the cryo mage honestly knocking out the cryo mage is my first priority just because he has this annoying crystal thing that everyone is familiar with by the way so i would try to break his shield and kill him as fast as possible I wouldn't worry too much about the Abyss Mage, or not the Abyss Mage, but the Herald at this point. Because the Herald's not that strong, he is only level 80. And plus you have a bunch of time because the floor before this probably didn't take that long at all. So I made a mistake here, I should have saved my burst for when he got his shield up because it would have kept freezing him. So always when you're fighting these mages, just save your burst for when they get their shields up because it really helps break their shields faster. So now we have our burst up, he will consistently get frozen. And now you see how fast his shield is going down with uh, Kaya's burst. That's why Kaya's burst is one of my favorites in terms of all these heralds. And just permafreeze in general. So far, pretty easy. Chamber 10. So honestly, this floor is just like the other ones. Like, they're all blend together. It doesn't even seem like a difference to me. You just do the same exact thing. You spam Yanfei, you spam Sucrose, and you're basically done. Okay, just like last floor, you want to go for the Cryo Mage first because he's going to get in the way. The only goal for this floor is really to have your Bennett's burst up by the time this guy transforms into his shield. Because if you have your burst up while he transforms into his shield, you basically just get a free kill against this guy. Again, the only annoying thing that you have to worry about is getting these Sealies to heal you. As you guys can see, my Bennett's burst is up. I'm just saving it for him to proc his shield and then I'm just going to use it. So right now I'd walk away so he doesn't take away your burst. And then as soon as he does, you just do Bennett burst and you spam his E ability. Because with Thundering Fury and Bennett's burst passive, you basically get infinite E charges. And if you have an energy recharge artifact like I do on my Bennett, uh, you're just gonna get your burst back up over and over. And even the sheer cold doesn't bother you that much. Because he heals, uh, him being Bennett. So there you go, easy clear. Okay, next up we have the Cryo Cube. And because we have a Pyro DPS, this Cryo Cube is like the easiest thing in the world because you're just consistently triggering melts. But yeah, it's probably one of the easiest cubes because you can just two times damage with Pyro DPS. So if you have like a Hu Tao or a Deluke or something like that, uh, this is a cakewalk. 
Uh, even with my Yanfei, with like the worst uh, stats ever and a free-to-play weapon, I'm hitting like 40k charge attacks. And then you just have to hit him with three icicles and then you're basically good. You just run up to him. And again, because you're affected by Cryo, your stamina is low, but... Yeah, this, this is probably the easiest boss fight you can ask for in the Abyss. And just like the previous floors, I feel like I'm just repeating myself, you really want to just focus the mages uh, instead of the big bosses because these guys are the most annoying things in the game, if I'm being honest. Aside from sheer cold. Yeah, the other guy hits hard, but you have Bennett, so you can just heal back up. You just want to focus this mage down so he's not annoying you later with bubbles. And then bam, you can just focus on this guy. Again, he's not too hard, but yeah, you can just burst this guy down. You know, he's not really a problem with like Fischl and Kaya. Okay, so next up we have floor 11, and in my opinion, floor 11 is by far the easiest out of all four floors, and that's because of the increased scroll damage that you get. And all you really need for this floor is going to be sucrose as well as a bunch of supports with different elements. And you guys will see in a second why this floor is just, just OP for sucrose, because she just throws down her burst and then it instantly goes back up. Because your scroll damage is so high, like everything is, and the AoE is a lot bigger, that you basically just clear the floor in like less than 30 seconds. And because you have an emo MC, you can do the kind of the same thing. Obviously not on Sucrose's level on this floor. It's just a bunch of smaller enemies and you have a bunch of an emo. So, so yeah, chamber one is really easy. And this guy, he doesn't really go for the center. So you can just focus him down. And you can use an emo MC to like trigger a uh, swirl, that way you get cryo damage bonus if you have the viridescent set that is. Aside from that, you don't really have to use any of your burst. As well as Sinchu and Kaya, they get their burst up so fast that I just like to spam it. Um, especially Sinchu, like all he has to do is use his E ability twice. And if you have the sacrificial sword like I do, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so chamber two, this is the same thing, it's just going to be a bunch of Fatui agents. All you're really going to do is apply cryo and then use Sucrose's burst and you're just going to watch them disappear. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As you guys can see, like really you just have to focus on the second half. So the second half is where it's going to be slightly harder and that's because you have Anemo MC and his burst AoE isn't as big and it's very linear. So it doesn't group them all together like Sucrose does. All you really have to do is focus the Hydro Fatui and then take your time with the other ones. And the reason why you have so much time is because how quickly you did the Sucrose run. So yeah, we'll just focus the, the Hydro guy first. And then once he's done, you can take your time with these other dudes because they can get annoying. But because you have Bennett, you can just quickly break their shields. I would try to break both of their shields at the same time because if you break one shield and the other one's chasing you with your with his little flamethrower, it does get a bit annoying. And honestly, I would try to charge up your burst on this guy. That way your burst are ready for the next floor. So once you have all your characters burst ready, I would not use them, especially Bennett's. Bennett's is going to be really important for the next floor. So I would take your time and charge up all your burst. So this that's why I saved this guy for last. And there you go. You can just take your time and beat this guy. Again, you like have an extra minute to spare even when taking time. Now we go into chamber three. So chamber three, again, it's two ruin guards. I would go with this one right here. And then you're just going to do the same thing you did on the other floors. And that's just spam your abilities. And again, you kind of want to make sure Sucrose's burst is ready because it's going to help out a lot. I made a mistake by not having it ready, but it's fine because you're basically just going to destroy these guys. Now look at the damage. It's, it's kind of ridiculous because you're doing like 16k per swirl. And the quicker you do that, the better because Chamber 3 does take a while, so you want as much time as possible. I personally on this floor like to focus the Electro Lector because he takes away your energy. The Hydro one, uh, he is more annoying, but because you don't have your burst with the Electro, I like to focus him. And again, all you have to do, which we did with the previous Electro Lector, is wait for Bennett's burst, use it, and then just make sure spam is E. And because you're healing, you know, you're not worried too much about the damage. Yeah, you can get knocked back, which can be annoying, especially with the Beyblade looking uh, Hydro Lector, but it's fine because you get your burst back so quick.
Like, even though I'm taking a lot of damage, like, it doesn't really matter that much. And then once you beat this guy, like, the Electro one, then you can just focus on the Hydro one. And because now there's no one there to, like, sap away your abilities, it shouldn't be as hard. And again, I personally would wait for this guy to put on his shield before I start using my burst with, like, Bennett and them. Because Singchu's burst doesn't really do anything against this guy. You really want Kaya's burst up in order to continuously freeze him. And you basically have an entire minute to beat this guy. So yeah, that's why I think, in my opinion, this is one of the easiest floors ever in the Abyss. Especially considering that there's both a Herald and a Lecter. And I'm doing this with a full 4-star team. You know, it's not like I have a, a crazy team. All you really have to do is just take your time. And because of the insane swirl buff, uh, Sucrose is just so broken. Um, and it makes this floor a cakewalk. And there you go, another 3 stars. Okay, so this is going to be my team for floor 12, guys. Again, like, it hasn't changed that much. So the only thing that's changed is instead of having a physical DPS Kaya, because up to this point we've had a physical cup on him, we have a cryo cup on him now because we're pairing him with Chong Yun. And again, we have two Anemo characters and we basically have the two main DPS characters. But this time you want to put Bennett on the first half because this is where the Lecter is and you're going to put your Perma Freeze team on the second half because this is where the Abyss Herald is. And basically the first floor is just a DPS check and you guys know my team is not hitting hard at all but we should still be able to easily get 3 stars on this. So on this floor I like to save both my Bennett and Diona's burst for when they transform and that's because when they do transform, one transforms into Cryo and we can easily burst him down. And once there's only one left it becomes a lot easier when there's two. So that's why I like to save both my Bennett and Diona for that. So at first you might not be doing a lot of damage, as soon as they start transforming you can uh plop your burst down and everything, and you're gonna burst this guy down. Because you're gonna be doing continuous melt damage, which is gonna help a lot. But again, like this is what I mean by stamina management. As you guys can see, my stamina bar is going down a lot. But yeah, at least we did a good job of bursting him down. Okay, now there's only one left. You know, we can take our time, put Diona's shield up. Okay, and what you're going to notice on this team is there's no healer, and honestly, you don't really need a healer for this team because Sing Chu does damage mitigation, and basically all the enemies on this team are going to be permanently frozen, and you guys will notice that. And one of the Geo Bishops turns into a Hydra one, so that's going to help you out even more because you're going to permafreeze him as well. So you want to focus the one that doesn't turn into a Hydra one first, and then go for the other one. But honestly, you can group them up together because, because you are Cryo, and you just freeze them, and this is the greatest team comp ever, and no one can change my mind on that. And if you have Viridescent on your Anemo MC, you can do that as well. Unfortunately, I have a Wanderer's Troop. <laughs> and I am using Sacrificial Greatsword on my Chang Yun. That way I can continuously freeze and further not need a healer because my Chang Yun and Kaya are permanently freezing. And this is what I mean. You don't really need a healer on this floor at all. So this guy's going to turn into Hydro, so we're going to focus this guy next to him. And yeah, Perma Freeze is broken. Not much to say. And there you go. And our Burst are all back up. Okay, so this is the floor a lot of people might not get 3 stars on, and I understand why. And that's because of the annoying Cryo Sisson Mage that spawns towards the end. So me personally, I like to save my Bennett and all my Burst for that moment. That way I can quickly Burst her down. And you guys are going to see that. And I also try to put my Sucrose Burst in the middle. Uh, obviously, I did a bad job there, but honestly, using Sucrose is not a bad idea because she just deals so much Swirl damage, especially when they're grouped up. But again, like you want to make sure you're not using her charge attacks like I am because you want to have good stamina management. And now you want to kind of lure them this way because this is where the Sisson Mage is going to spawn. And because we're Yanfei, we can uh, chill back and fire away. Okay, so this is where you're going to want to be. You, know, you want to you wanna burst her down. You want to kill her flies as fast as possible. You want to do as much damage as you can before she puts her shield up. Because once she starts freezing you like this, like that's where it gets annoying. Okay, cool. So that was a pretty good time. Like... I would keep retrying this until you get her down and you have like a good time left for your second half. 
I think over eight minutes and 30 seconds is a very good time because the second half for this floor doesn't take that long, especially with the freeze team. Okay, because you're the freeze team, there's not really much to worry about here. You just, you know, do your thing. And these guys get frozen, so they can't even run away like they normally would. <laughs> and yeah, like, freeze team is just OP. Like, there's not much you can say here. And just have your burst ready. So this guy isn't that hard. The only thing you have to be wary about is the geo things that come from the ground. I honestly like to time my burst. That way I, I frame through the geo things. So like right here, I would just pop this. And I kind of I frame through that. And then I would pop Chong Yun's I frame through that. Because they do do a decent amount of damage. And if you can dodge one or two, it's going to help out a lot. And if you have Viridescent on your Animo MC, by all means use that. But unfortunately, I have Wanderer's Troop on mine. <laughs> and there we go. Three stars on that. Okay, so on floor 12, chamber 3, first half and second half, one thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have your Anemo characters burst up. That way, the mages get their shields down and you can burst them down immediately. And then you can focus on the Abyss Lecter or Abyss Herald. Okay, let's burst these guys down. Again, once we get both of the mages down, which we should do together, that should be the goal, you can start focusing this guy. And at this point, it's just a DPS check. Because there's not much you can do against this guy aside from deal damage. But make sure you have your Bennett's burst up by the time uh, he puts his shield up. That way you can uh, do the Thundering Fury cheese. Okay, and this is going to be the harder side because of the Cryo Abyss Mage. It's going to take a lot of attempts, but you can do it. You just have to try to group up these mages together. The hard thing is with Anemo MC being like a pretty poor Anemo character because he can get easily interrupted while using his E ability. And his Q ability doesn't really work on shields. So you just have to be really careful. And on top of that, you don't have a healer. So let's see if we can do it. You need to swirl the Cryo and uh, Pyro together. Which they never want to group up, which is a slight problem. Like, they always want to be separated. So, you know, you, it's just trial and error at this point. Like, there's not much you can do. And again, because you don't have a healer, it's going to be a lot harder. But right now, they're grouped up so I can break the shield. So make sure to use your Sing Chu as a heal. Okay, and then once, now you can focus this guy down. And at this point, we're not going to get three stars, but that's fine. You know, I think we did a pretty decent job. Because this point takes a while, because there's not really an easy way to break this guy's shield, if I'm being honest. Two or three stars, that is the goal. Again, we have to be careful our uh, Kaya doesn't die. We are playing with no healer here. We are using simply Chang Yun. Okay, so we did get two stars. Nice. And there you guys go. That is the entire Abyss with four stars only with very realistic investment for all your characters. Let me know what you guys think, guys. So again, like that's not the exact teams you have to use. I think one of the biggest improvements you can make, at least with the characters I use, is replacing Yanfei with maybe a Diluc, a Hu Tao, or even maybe a new five star coming out. Uh, or replacing an Emo MC with either a Venti or a Kazuha when that comes out. That's going to really help you out a lot. But even then, like you can clear the abyss with just this team. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this helped. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.